Hi, I'm Ken Chow. I'd like to welcome you and congratulate you on taking this important step to learn one of the most effective trading approaches you will ever find. I named this course Superstructure Trading. The goal of this course is to teach you to recognize and trade the most predictable part of the market. Now, here's the exciting news. You learn to anticipate winning trades in advance. The main focus of this course is alignment. I cannot emphasize this enough. Now, you know that everything works better when it's in proper alignment. The tires on your car, your golf swing, and everything else in this world, they all work amazingly well when they're in alignment. I'm going to teach you proper price and time alignment that is so critical to trade profitably and consistently. It works in all time frames, from the monthly chart down to the one minute chart, which means it works whether you position trade, swing trade, or day trade. And it works in all freely traded markets, from stocks to commodities to bonds to foreign currencies. Here's the real secret Superstructure Trading contains this awesome tool that I've developed called the time range. With proper alignment, this powerful filter basically eliminates questionable trade setups. And you'll be amazed as to how simple it is to use. Since I've made this discovery and started using it myself in my trading, my winning percentage has gone up dramatically, and so will yours after you start using it. In fact, after you're done with this course, you'll know exactly where to start. You'll recognize the dominant structure as well as the supporting structures. And when you have alignment in time and price, you'll know that you'll have the making of a superstructure trade setup. And then you'll execute the trade flawlessly and you'll make money. And you'll do this over and over again. Soon, you'll find that you'll be taking fewer but more profitable trades. Your confidence will soar like never before because now you know exactly why your trades work. After a while, trading will become very relaxing for you because now you're in total control. This course contains six chapters. Chapter one starts off with the foundation. You need a solid foundation to begin with. Chapter two covers the price structure, which is built on the foundation. I've also included two trading strategies here, which I call strategy number one and strategy number two. Chapter three covers the time structure, which is the time range. Only superstructure trading has this. It's found nowhere else. Chapter four covers the Fibonacci ratios. When you apply these ratios properly, you get unbelievable accuracy in your trading. Chapter five goes over the supporting structures, which are used to align with the dominant structure. And in chapter six, we put everything together. Here, the dominant structure becomes a superstructure when time and price align. And you also get 10 case studies. All steps are broken down in minute detail to make sure you understand everything clearly. And the manual that comes with this course is kept short intentionally. Because if you're like me, you don't enjoy reading thick instructional manuals. Learning by video is by far the best format available, as you'll soon see. I suggest you watch these videos several times. Now, let me warn you, at first, this course may appear a little bit long, but that's because it's very thorough. I promise you this, this course is all substance. It is all meat. There's no fluff, just lots of examples. And finally, alignment also applies to you. Are you in alignment with your intentions? with your goals, with your dreams. In the end, it's all about you and what you bring emotionally and mentally to your trading. This is a much underrated part of trading. In fact, it took me a while before I addressed this issue myself. However, this home study course does not cover the mental and emotional part of trading. It's simply beyond the scope of this course. But if you want guidance in this area, please contact me. Now, I know you're eager to begin, so without further ado, let's start with Chapter 1, The Foundation. The foundation of this course is built on the classical definition of trend. An uptrend is defined as a series of higher lows and higher highs. And a downtrend is defined as a series of lower highs and lower lows. This pertains to both 
a bar to bar scenario and a pivot to pivot scenario. Now I know you think this definition is very very simple but believe me we're gonna get a lot of mileage out of this. Now let's take a look at a bar to bar scenario to start. We'll be using the bar chart for price analysis in this course. Now let's take a close look at one bar in this chart. Let's take a look at this bar for example. It has four components. It has a bar high, a bar low, and also has an opening which is the little nub to the left and a close which is the little nub to the right. When we analyze price action bar to bar, we compare a bar to the previous bar. In other words, we'll look at a bar's high to see how it relates to the previous bar's high. In this case, we have a higher high. Looking at the low, we also have a higher low bar to bar. So based on this bar showing up as such, we can say we are in an uptrend bar to bar. This bar also has a higher high and a higher low, so this bar continues the uptrend and so forth. Higher lows, higher highs, all the way up. Once you have this bar here and then follows with this bar, we no longer have a higher high and a higher low. Instead, we have a lower high and a lower low. We can say that the trend has changed. The bar to bar trend has changed from up to down. Now just as quickly in this particular situation we moved up again with the very next bar showing a higher high and a higher low. So by definition this is how we define uptrends and downtrends. There are however two slightly different scenarios. Let's take a look at this bar right here. This bar is known as an inside bar. An inside bar is simply a bar that is inside the previous bar's range. In other words, it has a high that is lower than the previous bar's high, but it also has a low that is higher than the previous bar's low. We may also have what's known as an outside bar. This bar here, this last bar, is an outside bar. An outside bar, of course, has its range outside of the previous bar's range. It has a higher high and a lower low. These two bars have the exact same low, but the second bar has a lower high. Now, this little bar here qualifies as an inside bar. There are two bars down here with the exact same high. This longer bar has a lower low. That makes this long bar a legitimate outside bar. These two bars over here have the exact same high and this little bar has a higher low. That makes this little bar a legitimate inside bar. An inside bar or an outside bar can have the exact same high or low as the previous bar. Inside and outside bars need additional bars to confirm trend because by themselves they are indecisive and they are not in a higher high, higher low or lower high, lower low relationship with the previous bar. An inside bar is considered a non-move and we will treat it as if it's invisible. Here the market has made an up move. Higher bar low, higher bar high and then we get this inside bar. We will simply ignore it. Instead, we'll look at the following bar. 
to see if it does have a higher low and a higher high compare to this bar which is before the inside bar if we do have that and we do the uptrend continues here is another inside bar right here we have a lower high and a lower low here is a downtrend with this inside bar we'll treat it like it's invisible and we look to the following bar to see how it relates to this bar prior to the inside bar yes we have a higher low and a higher high we are in an uptrend and over here we have an inside bar as well we look of course to the following bar to confirm the continuing downtrend yes we have still lower high and lower low likewise an inside bar here treated like it's invisible and this bar here confirms the lower high and the lower low causing this downtrend to be continuing here we have an interesting scenario we have an inside bar here in relationship with this previous bar so it's invisible however this bar right after it is also an inside bar as it relates to this same big bar here and same with the next bar remember these two bars are invisible so this has to relate to this same bar here again non move as it does not take out the high and the low of that reference bar same with this one and that bar in fact all of these bars are non moves they're just going sideways the market is simply treading water in this scenario outside bar trend confirmation we can simply use the definition of trend to confirm trend direction following an outside bar let's take a look at some examples this is an outside bar and what do we see following it we see a bar with a lower high and a lower low therefore downtrend this outside bar here what do we see following it we see a bar that has a higher low and a higher high so uptrend is the move here now we did not mention anything about using the opening price and the closing price when we're doing bar to bar trend analysis because they don't play a role in the definition however with an outside bar you may want to take a quick peek because sometimes that would give you a clue now here's an outside bar right here now take a close look at the opening price and the closing price off that bar usually but not always that may give you some sort of clue as to which direction the confirmation may appear in this case because this shows bearishness as the closing price is lower than the opening price we get confirmed with this bar to the down direction there'll be times when an outside bar follows an inside bar so how do you handle that where is the confirmation well let's take a look at some situation here and here we have an inside bar and of course an outside bar follows it if we were to say that an inside bar is invisible then of course this outside bar will be relating to this bar over here and in this scenario we do have a higher low and a higher high situation so indeed no confirmation is needed however you also can be very anal and insist upon this being an outside bar which of course means you need confirmation with the following bar now which way would you like to go well actually there is no right or wrong here the way I trade such a situation is I look for other factors that we will get into later as you'll see
a pivot is created when a bar to bar trend changes its direction. Let's start with the first few bars on this chart. We are in a downtrend bar to bar as we see lower high and a lower low. Suddenly we see this huge outside bar and it gets confirmed with this bigger bar to the upside. So the bar to bar trend changes from down to up making this our first pivot low. We move up from this pivot low to this bar here. When it changes trend direction from up to down thanks to this bar showing a lower high and a lower low this becomes our pivot high and we drop down to this pivot low. Notice the inside bar in the middle of this move downwards. As we move up from this pivot low bar to bar, higher low and higher high, we come across this inside bar. Remember we will ignore it and treat it like it's not even there. The next bar is an outside bar outside of not just this bar here but this previous bar as a side note. Anyway we have confirmation with this bar here changing this uptrend to a downtrend making this of course our next pivot high. So this is our pivot high not this one. So of course we come down to a pivot low and up to a pivot high as we move down from this pivot high we come across this outside bar. Now with all outside bars we need confirmation by looking at the following bar. Now this following bar shows a lower high and a lower low so this confirms the continuation of this downward move from this pivot high down to this pivot low. But this little hiccup that we have here due to an outside bar can be considered some sort of semi pivot. It is not really a pivot. Why? Because a real pivot high needs to come off of a pivot low. And there was no pivot low that we came off of to this semi pivot high. We'll talk more about these semi pivots later. But for now we'll just concentrate on genuine pivot highs and pivot lows. So coming off of this pivot low we move up and again we see an outside bar here confirmed by the following bar making this a move up from this pivot low to this pivot high. Again, this is a semi pivot. Then we move down from this pivot high down to this pivot low. And again up to this pivot high and then down to this pivot low. And finally up to this last pivot high right here. A price range is a price move from a pivot low to a pivot high or from a pivot high to a pivot low with price action contained within. Now let's take a look at some examples to illustrate. The simple price range has no pivots in between. All there is is a series of bars moving bar to bar from one pivot to the next. Let me illustrate. Let us take a look at first this pivot low right here. It moves up bar to bar to this pivot high right here. And when you connect the two pivots you have the simple price range. Now when price starts dropping from this pivot high downwards it bumps into this pivot low right here and it forms another simple price range. So let me draw them all in for you so you can see 
what they look like. The simple price range should be pretty easy to recognize. Just make sure to keep an eye out on things such as inside bars. In this situation here, the inside bar is a non-move, so the simple price range simply goes from this pivot low to this pivot high. Same thing for outside bars like this one. This outside bar has this semi-pivot, but we're not going to concern about that right now, so it simply moves from this pivot high down to this pivot low. This is also an outside bar with the same low but a slightly higher high here. A complex price range has pivots in between. And let's see how that looks like. Let's take a look at this range as drawn from here to here. Is this a good complex price range? Yes, it is. We have a pivot high and a pivot low between this pivot high and this pivot low. And therefore, this is a good legitimate complex price range. And this one is also considered legitimate and good. Here's another good one with a couple of pivot highs and pivot lows in between. Now, how about this one right here? Is this legitimate? Well, yes it is. We have pivot highs here, pivot lows here, all contained between this low and this high. This is also a good complex price range. How about this? What if I were to draw a line from this low to this high here? Would that be considered a legitimate price range? No, it wouldn't be. It would not be a correctly drawn complex price range because you have this pivot high here higher than this pivot high over here. In other words, this pivot high over here is already beyond the range from this high to this low. There's a pivot not contained within that range. So therefore, this cannot be a legitimate complex price range. Now how about this? Would this be a correctly drawn price range? No, it wouldn't be for the exact same reason. There's a pivot low here that is lower than this pivot low over here. And how about this? Would this be considered a price range at all? Well, of course not. You need to go from a pivot high to a pivot low or from a pivot low to a pivot high. How about this? Is this good? Well, yes it is. In fact, that's a simple price range. Just keep in mind that a price range needs to have all price action within its pivot high and its pivot low. Let's now take a look at what a pivot to pivot trend looks like. Drawing simple price ranges to determine pivot to pivot trend. Let's start with this high right here. We'll go down to this pivot low and then up to this pivot high, down to this pivot low, up to this pivot high, and down to this pivot low. Now, what do we have here so far? We have two highs exactly at the same level. So we can start with this high, this pivot high for now. From this pivot high, we come down to this pivot low. And then we come up to this pivot high. Now this pivot high is lower than this pivot high, so this becomes a lower high. And then we move down to this lower pivot low because this low is lower than this low over there. So once we have lower pivot high and lower pivot low, by definition, that is the downtrend. But then price action moves up to here. Here we have 
a higher high and then we move down to this low this low is a lower low compared to this one right here we can say that we don't have trend because you can't have a higher high and a lower low this is almost like a pivot to pivot version of the outside bar so we'll talk about this in terms of the definition of trend whether the market is moving per the definition of trend or not we're not talking about trading yet we'll be covering that real soon in the next part but right now we want to take a look at how some of these drawn in simple price ranges can be easily seen to support a pivot to pivot trend or not okay so let's continue from this pivot low here we are moving up so let me erase everything else to start now we'll just call this a low for now from this pivot low we move up here's an inside bar here is the next high from this high we move down the very next bar is our next low now this low is higher than this low so this becomes a higher low and then when we move up bar to bar the moment this bar shows up this bar right here now this bar right here is higher than this high over here so with that in mind we do have a higher high the moment this bar shows up so that makes this obviously a higher high that means we are in an uptrend from the definition of trend and from this higher high we drop the very next bar to yet another higher low and then we move up to this high here which of course is a higher high compared to this previous pivot high so this is how a pivot to pivot uptrend looks like we start off with a low coming up we, we start off with a low coming up to a high and then we drop down to a low a higher low once we come off of here and right here where we make it above this high we are in higher high territory right around here this is a point of very very it's a very very interesting point because you're breaking above this pivot high here so once you settle up here with a higher high then you come down with a higher low once again and then up to a higher high from this higher high which will we'll just call that a high price action drops down to this low right here from this low we move up to this high now this high is a lower high compared to this previous pivot high up there so this is a lower pivot high we then move down to this pivot low here which of course is a lower low compared to this low then we move up to this lower high right here and down to this lower low right here this is the end of part one this is the foundation which the rest of the course will be built on this is the definition of trend right here you see pivot to pivot trend higher lows higher highs or lower lows lower highs pivot to pivot this is the foundation in which we will now build on the next chapter chapter two is structure we'll first start with price structure and then we're gonna go on to time structure Here in chapter 2, you'll learn about price structure, which is the measured move. The measured move gives you trend direction as well as trend strength. You'll learn about back-to-back -back measure moves as well as a measure move within a measure move. The measured move is derived from the pivot to pivot trend measured moves are found in all markets and in all time intervals let's say price action starts from pivot low A and it rallies bar to bar up to a pivot high called B and then drops from B down to C 
and then rallies from C up till D. This price structure is known as the bullish measured move. This measured move is bullish because we have a higher low at C and a higher high at D. This structure only gets confirmed as a bullish measure move when price action rallies above B coming off of C because C is already a higher low. Now we need to have price action rally above B on its way up from C. Only when that happens do we have any sort of higher high in combination with a higher low. So if price action were to move up from C, the moment it goes above B right around here, yes indeed we will have a higher high with already a higher low. That confirms a bullish measure move right around here. Now why is that? Well if price action were to rally off of C and it doesn't go above B, we don't have a higher high. And if all of a sudden it drops down from there, we don't have any making of a bullish measured move. We don't have a higher high even though we have a higher low. Let's take a look at the components that make up the measured move. First we have this range A to B. This is the reference range. Next we have the BC range. B to C is the retracement of AB. Then we have this CD range. This is the reaction range. CD will be measured against AB. We'll be asking how big is CD as a percentage of AB. Is it bigger than AB or is it smaller than AB? It has been said that the CD move should equal to the AB move. But from my personal experience, CD has a tendency to be greater than AB. But for now, we'll say that CD will at least be equal to AB. The measured move not only tells us trend direction, it also tells us trend strength. We'll look at the BC move and determine how deep it has retraced against the AB move. We will use the 50% mark of the AB range as a guide. If point C retraces less than 50% before trading above point B, then we can declare this uptrend to be strong. But if the retracement at C turns out to be deep against AB, that is more than 50%, then we can say that the trend is weak. And if it's right at 50%, we can also call it strong. Now, let's look at a bearish scenario. Again, the depth of the retracement at C determines the strength of this downtrend. The retracement at C is considered shallow if it retraces less than 50%. And therefore, this downtrend is considered strong. The retracement at C is considered deep if it retraces more than 50%. And this downtrend is considered weak. In all markets, you will find back-to-back -back measured moves. Let me illustrate. Let's say you have a bullish measured move. A, B, C, D. You will see the market giving you another measured move following point D. Where the old capital C to capital D move in red now becomes the new little A to little B range. 
So here you see the first measured move and following it back to back is this second measured move. When the market is trending very strongly and you can tell because there'll be a shallow retracement here and or here there may be more back-to-back -back measured moves. Okay, let's take a look at the bearish scenario. You have a measured move going down. A, B, C, D. And following it is the back-to-back -back measured move. And we'll call that little A, B, C, D. The capital C to capital D range now becomes the new little A to little B move in pink that is a common leg of both measured moves and if there are shallow retracements here and or here there may be an additional measured move back to back in fact there may be quite a few in a strongly trending market There may also be a measured move within a measured move as the market unfolds. Let's take a look. Here is the making of a bullish measured move. Off of point C, price may not go straight up bar to bar to point D. What may happen instead is that the market forms another measured move. What makes this a measured move within the measured move is the fact that this high here at little b is actually lower than the pivot high at capital B. If little b was to show up as a higher high instead, then this would simply be two measured moves back to back. Let's now look at the bearish scenario. As price drops from point C, it doesn't go straight bar to bar to point D. Instead, it forms a measured move within a measured move. Of course, the key point is that little b should not be lower than capital B. That's the telltale sign. Now, if this low here was to be lower then this low over here, then we would not have a measured move within a measured move any longer. It would simply be two measured moves back to back. Let's say price action moves from G up to H. How strong is that move? Well, that's determined by how the market unfolds. We'll run through some scenarios going from a strong to a weak situation. Now, this is not an exact science. This is just some pecking order. Other variables need to be factored in, such as the time range, which we haven't covered yet, but we'll go over in details in later chapters. If the move unfolds, just bar to bar, then that would be the strongest scenario. If the bars are long with very little overlap, that makes it even stronger. And of course, G to H is a simple price range. If there is an inside bar or an outside bar along the way, that makes it a little bit less strong because now you have a little hiccup in the middle. If the market unfolds as a measured move, but with a shallow retracement, that makes it a little bit less strong because now you have a speed bump along the way. And if there are two measure moves back to back, now it becomes a little bit less strong because now you have two speed bumps. And if you have a deep retracement, now the market is a little bit weaker. If you have two measure moves back to back and the retracements are deep, now you're talking about a weak move going up to H. And if the CD move is not a move bar to bar, but broken down into smaller measure moves, that makes it 
even weaker. And the same thing goes for the CD move of the second measured move. In fact, this is the weakest way price action may unfold from G to H because these moves up here are not straight moves. They are, they are complex uh, price ranges. They zig and zag their way through. They are not moving up very enthusiastically along with uh, deep retracements at these uh, levels make this a very, very weak up move going from G to H. Let's take a quick look at the bearish scenario. The strongest move, of course, is the bar-to-bar -bar move. Next is the bar-to-bar -bar move with an inside bar or an outside bar. Next is the measured move with a shallow retracement. Then there are two measured moves back-to-back -back with shallow retracements. And then the single measure move with a deep retracement. And then two measure moves with deep retracements. And then the CD moves broken down into measure moves as well. So this is going from the strongest to the weakest going downwards. Here are the rules to trade measure move strategy number one. Pivot A of the first measure move should be lower than the previous pivot low if going long and higher than the previous high if going short. Number two, the first measure move should have shallow retracement. Number three, the first measure moves CD range should be smaller than the AB range. Number four, enter the market as the second measure move forms pivot at C. Number five, the initial stop loss is placed one tick away from the recent pivot. Number six, write out one pivot if needed until the minimum target is reached at CD equals AB of the second measure move. Let's take a look at some actual price charts. This is Smart Corn Daily. Oh, by the way, this is Q Charts, the charting service that I've been using for the last six or seven years. I am not endorsing them in any particular way. I do not have any financial interest in them. I'm simply a happy customer who likes their layout. Also, they have excellent click and drag Fibonacci applications as you'll see later. Also later, I'll give you a free website which you can get started with and they have intraday charts as well as daily and weekly charts that are updated throughout the day. To start, let's look at this part of the chart of corn. Let me open up this area so we can get a closer look. Using this strategy, you'll be trading the CD leg of the second measure move in a back-to-back -back scenario. But let's take a quick look at rule number one. This rule says that pivot A of the first measure move should be lower than the previous low if going long. Here's the pivot low, and it is lower than this previous pivot low. Is this really a pivot low A? Now that we've seen B, C, and D, yes, it is a good point A. This first rule forces this pivot A to be a true low and be the first measure move and not some former pivot C of some other measure move. You can expect back-to-back -back measure moves, but there's no guarantee that there'll be a third or fourth in a series. Rule number two says first measure move should have shallow retracement. Here the BC drop against the AB range is right at 50%, so we'll count it here as shallow. A shallow retracement at pivot point C indicates a strong move in the making. 
The third rule says that the first measure moves CD range should be smaller than the AB range. There's point D. So in this case, CD is less than AB. Remember, with all measure moves, you can expect the CD move to be equal to AB, if not more. So if the CD move is just over here, then there should be some more move eventually to come as it works its way here, whether it be this way or simply this way. So a shortened CD move tells us that there should be more move to come. Rule number four says enter the market as the second measure move forms a pivot at C. Now we know that the CD leg of the first measure move becomes the AB of the second. As we watch price action pulls back from little b, we will be focusing in on the potential pivot bar. Now the potential pivot bar needs to have a pivot low that is not lower than the previous pivot low, which is A. So this qualifies as the potential pivot bar. Remember, it's not C yet until we see what happens to the following bar, how the following bar reacts and behaves versus this potential pivot bar will determine whether this potential pivot bar becomes the low of C. Let's take a closer look at this potential pivot bar. If the next bar opens between the high and the low of the potential pivot bar, then what we do is put a buy stop one tick above the high, right around here. So if and when the market rallies, you're in the market you get filled as soon as pivot C gets confirmed. What if the market opens below the range of this pivot bar? Well, you don't want to buy the market on its way up from such a low, because at best it would make an outside bar, which means we may need the following bar to confirm. And this low here may have been below a already. So we don't want that scenario if it opens below the potential pivot bars low. What if it gaps up at the open? Do we want to buy it right there because of the strength? Well, I don't know. Price actually may retrace and close the gap. Later on in the gap section, we'll cover gaps in details. But I would not buy it because you're not getting in at the best price. Ideally, this potential pivot bar should be somewhat short because you'll be getting it at a better price and you will have a better reward to risk ratio. In other words, you'll get in at the move earlier while shooting for the same profit target. Rule number five says to place the stop loss one tick below a recent pivot low. Well, now that we've formed a pivot low at C, that would be where it goes. So as soon as you see the next bar make a higher low and a higher high compared to that potential pivot bar C, that makes that a pivot low and one tick below there is a protective sell stop. And again, that's why we wanted that bar to be short ideally. Rule says to write out one pivot if needed until minimum target is reached at CD equals AB. Usually, you'll see a move from C to D pretty much bar to bar straight up. If you don't see a bar to bar move and a pivot shows up, simply readjust your stop from one tick below C up to the next pivot low if that's what it takes to get to point D. So these are the rules to set up a trade, get in a trade, manage a trade, and get out of a trade. Well, let's look at more examples. Here you see a high that is higher than a previous high. Here's the first measure move. This is indeed an A, 
and between A and B you have an inside bar. We see the BC retracement being less than 50% of AB on the first measured move. The CD move is a lot smaller than the AB. In fact, point D is just slightly below point B. And with that good setup, we also have a very short potential pivot bar. And right here is the entry to go short. Right here is the protective buy stop. The market then falls very strongly to below D. Let's look at one more situation on this coin chart. Let's take a look at this area right up here. We have a higher high and a higher pivot low. Question is, is this pivot low lower than any previous pivot lows? Yes. Lower than this and this and that. So this is our first measure move A, B, C, and D. Is C to D smaller than AB? Yes, it is. It is very small. And D is just slightly above B. Here we can buy when it pivots above this pivot bar, which means we'll be buying it right around here on this, on this bar. And we ride it up above somewhere around here. So here you see three trades in corn. And here's the weekly chart of T-bonds. Let's take a look at where our first measure move is. Here is A, B, up to C, down to D. You can see that the C, D move is less than A, B. And the B, C retracement is less than half of A, B. And this Point A here is actually higher than previous pivot highs. So let's draw in the AB of the second measure move. There's AB up to C and confirmation to go short right over there. This pivot high gets confirmed. The market goes down lower highs, lower lows, bar to bar. Measured move strategy number two. Rule number one, pivot A of the first measured move does not need to be a new low or high. Number two, first measured move may have deep retracement. Number three, second measured moves retracement at pivot C needs to be shallower then the first measure moves pivot at C. And the rest of the rules are the same as in strategy number one. Copper had a tremendous run to the upside in the spring of 2006. Let's see how strategy number two can get us in on this trade even in the latter stages of the move. Rule number one says that pivot A of the first measured move does not need to be a new low. Now obviously this up move is already in progress. So there are other lows prior to A. Let's see where A is. Could this be our point A? There is the first measured move. The second rule says that the first measured move may have deep retracement. In this case, it does. But what it doesn't say is that the CD move needs to be smaller than AB because what we're doing here is we're looking at a move from C to D that is a ferocious move. And in this case, we have it with gaps. So the CD move proves that it wants to go up. It seems like in a strongly trending market, especially when you filter it out with time range analysis, which we'll do in the next chapter, this gives you a tremendous amount of confidence that the upward move is still here, is still alive, and there's still more move to come. The third rule says the second measure moves retracement 
at pivot C needs to be shallower than that of the first measured move. Now, what we're saying is we want to see price action getting stronger. And coupled with the fact that the CD move is already stretched out with gaps and all, once you combine that with a shallower retracement, then we're in good shape. So here, the CD leg of the first measured move becomes the new AB range of the second measured move. We're going to let the market tell us when it wants to pivot up. So we'll keep on buying or we'll keep on trying to buy one tick above these potential pivot bars highs as they come off of B. But if they were to keep retracing downwards and not get us in, there comes a point where the retracement of this against this may be deeper than this retracement against that. If the potential pivot bar has retraced so much, we will not be buying it even if it were to pivot up. But in this case, we're okay. This BC retracement is shallower than the one off of the first retracement. And we'll manage this trade just the same as we would in strategy number one. So once we pivot up right around here, up we go to new highs. Here you see the August gold daily chart. After rallying very strongly in the beginning part of the year, in mid-May, gold starts to drop from its highs. And what you see here is the making of the measured move. A is up here, B is down there, there's C and D. And there is the first measured move. And when you see this potential pivot bar showing up, you can target the low here to go short. Now if you don't get filled here, you should not try again with the next bar if it continues to go higher. But you do get filled here, short. And the market goes down a little and then trades sideways for a few bars before making this pivot high, which you do need to ride out. So here's where you place your protective buy stop initially and then adjust it down to here so you can ride the move down to here. You may also choose to ride out another pivot before taking profits. That's your discretion. As mentioned earlier, in both strategy number one and strategy number two, what you're doing is using the first measure move to prepare to trade the second one. You want the measure moves to have simple price ranges. So this move down here should be bar to bar. Up here, bar to bar. And the same goal for these ranges here. Now you may be subjected to an inside bar or an outside bar after you enter the market. If this happens, then all you do is use the confirmation rules as explained in chapter 1. But for the most part, you want to keep things simple. It is best not to have a lot of bars making up these measured moves. An important note, you need to look at the nature of the individual simple price ranges. Look at this move down here. There's a gap in between these two bars coming off of this high. That's showing you strength to the downside. Whereas the upward move here is weak with an inside bar. And these three bars show a lot of overlap. This downward move here is very strong with long bars end to end and without much overlap. So clearly the individual price ranges are telling you the direction of the bias. And this is important, especially when you're trading strategy number two, because you are starting with a deeper retracement on the first measure move. You want lots of clues to support trading in the direction of the trend. Later on, other tools will be introduced to help you filter out questionable trade setups to really improve your overall trading and accuracy. Okay, now here are the two free websites, futuresource.com and tfccharts.com.